Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, everyone. Uh, I hope everybody is doing good. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, we have uh, so far covered the majority portion of the marketing section in our course now, um, including the branding, uh, which was one of the major topics in uh, uh, this course. Um, now, uh, in this session, what we are going to do is we are going to look at uh, the entrepreneurial marketing as such, uh, uh, which is going to actually give you a little bit of a guidance uh, that what exactly you are going to do uh, and what you should be doing when you get into uh, uh, marketing your product or the service. So uh, that is the reason why the uh, topic of this lecture is the entrepreneurial marketing, uh, your way ahead. Uh, so when, when we actually talk about the entrepreneurial marketing, uh, the basic definition of which actually uh, of uh, the entrepreneurial marketing which can actually be defined uh, as entrepreneurial marketing is proactive identification and exploration uh, exploitation of opportunities for acquiring and retaining the profitable cons customers through innovative approach to risk management resource leverage and value creation right so um, According to this definition, uh, there are a couple of things which have been highlighted in this, that entrepreneurial marketing is proactive, right? Identification and exploitation of the opportunities, right? So that is a proactive identification and exploitation of the opportunities for acquiring and retaining the profitable customers, which is the profitable customers, right? And through the innovative approaches, which is innovation, or we can, uh, sorry, we can actually call this an innovation, right? To risk management, resource leverage, and value creation, right? So that's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, these are the seven different uh, dimensions we can call of entrepreneurial marketing, right? These seven things are very necessary when you come to the entrepreneurial marketing. You being an entrepreneur, you must understand uh, must understand that these seven dimensions will play an extensive role uh, in your uh, marketing. Right. Uh, when you are actually working on your product, when you are trying to uh, put your product into the market, uh, these seven things are going to play a very important role. All right. So let's have a, uh, have a look at uh, these uh, seven dimensions one by one uh, so that we can understand that what exactly these dimensions are and why and how they are important uh, when you're going to put your product into the market. So the first one is the proactiveness. Um, you being an entrepreneur, you must be very much proactive and have a keen observation um, of looking around in the market uh, and get awareness of the external market environment that what actually is changing within uh, that market environment, right? Uh, if there are, a ch uh, 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 there are uh, uh, things changing, if the requirements of the customers are changing, you have to be very proactive in understanding uh, your customer, right? Uh, you have to be very proactive in understanding that how your competitors are actually um, offering the products or the services or how they they are actually uh, uh, entertaining their customers so what are their weaknesses what are your competitors weaknesses what are your competitors strengths right uh, what exactly is changing in the market uh, are there any changes in the actors as we, as we studied earlier and the actors being the competitors and the customers right uh, or there are uh, any changes ex uh, externally um, if you talk about the environment like uh, is is uh, the government imposing something or is there any other external uh, factor which may affect the actors as such right so uh, the proactiveness is very important so you have to proactively um, 
uh, uh, proactively uh, see the things in the uh, in your surroundings uh, as such um, similarly <clears throat> when it comes to the marketing it's actually the proactiveness in um, developing the network and we'll see uh, a little bit in the uh, uh, down in the slides that uh, the networking and personal communication that actually counts a lot in uh, the entrepreneurial marketing right uh, so you need to have a very proactive approach uh, towards your uh, uh, you know um, networking uh, uh, with the people with uh, uh, with the customers so that they can actually give you the feedback through which you can actually uh, you can adapt to the changes right <clears throat> Uh, then comes the risk taking. Uh, risk taking is the propensity of an entrepreneur to accept the loss right um, you being an entrepreneur you have to actually calculate the loss you have to uh, you have to calculate the risk that what are the risks where do you see the maximum risk how can you mitigate or minimize that risk right how can you actually go along with uh, 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 with the things by um, you know avoiding the uh, uh, the potential risks right uh, actually uh, Reduce, by reducing the risk, you can actually help yourself to actually um, give yourself a little bit of an edge in the market, right? So the risk propensity, uh, risk taking is basically calculating the risks and investing in this and readiness for the fatal outcomes. There is a possibility that you might fail. So how can you avoid failing yourself? So what do you see where the possible risks are harm you so all you need to do is that you need to actually see anything which might harm you and you can actually mitigate that risks uh, uh, risk or risks accordingly right uh, the third one is actually the opportunity now opportunity is the possible gap in the market and we have been actually discussing this thing a lot before right uh, the opportunity gap uh, is actually comes out of this differentiation or might be a possibility it is actually a sort of a weakness within your competitor it might be actually something which is not being offered in the market at this point of time right so uh, what we need to see is that what are the possible opportunities now you being an entrepreneur they, you must understand the three different topologies uh, which actually come into the category of uh, opportunity one is that the recognition of opportunity when the demand and supply already exists now when we talk about uh, uh, this category which is basically the first one uh, this topology in this topology uh, you have plenty of supplies and you have plenty of uh, demand uh, right so when there is a plenty of demand and even there's a plenty of supply uh, the things are not that difficult right uh, it's it's easy to maneuver around right um, but when it's when the demand exists and supplies do not exist now this is where you actually get the maximum uh, 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 this is where you get not the maximum but this is where you get um, the real challenge right uh, that the demands are there uh, but the supplies aren't there so how are you going to actually get this supply and because the demand exists so if you actually arrange or if you um, uh, you know uh, come across and mitigate this particular risks uh, a risk uh, and get a supply from somewhere and you manage to actually get the supply uh, you can actually get the major share of the market being an initiator or being the first in the market so that is an advantage that is a first mover advantage right uh, so <clears throat> if you manage to get the supplies right and the demand is also there right so um, i think this is a win win situation so first mover uh, you being a first mover in the market will get the maximum share of the market right um, and now as far as the third one is concerned the 
demand isn't there and supply isn't there. Now you must be thinking that if the demand of the market isn't there, why would someone even start that thing, right? But this is a fact that if the demand isn't there, the demand can actually be created. Right. And this is exactly what happened with uh, if, if I give you the example of tea. Right. Initially in Indo Pak, uh, the tea wasn't here. Right. Uh, the tea uh, was uh, a, usually people um, uh, used to have this, uh, you know, um, uh, lassi. Right. Um, similarly, Coca Cola wasn't here, uh, Pepsi wasn't here. Um, uh, People used to have different uh, different uh, sorts of uh, drinks like lassi and uh, maybe other things, right? But the demand of the tea was then created in uh, this subcontinent. Same as the case with the Coca Cola. Same as the case with the Pepsi, right? Uh, so the demand was created. Now over the period of time, if we see uh, over the period of one century, right, uh, the demand of the tea and the Coca-Cola, Pepsi, that have, uh, they have actually uh, increased a lot. And uh, the subcontinental drinks like Lassi, right, that has actually decreased a lot, right? Uh, people usually don't um, uh, go for Lassi, right? Uh, they only go for the Lassi when, uh, you know, you're having a breakfast or something. Um, and that also occasionally, right? Okay. So these are the three types of topologies that you might actually see, look out for the opportunities. Um, if you are going to actually go for the high demand and high supply, uh, the profit margins are going to be nominal. Uh, they're not going to exceed a certain limit. Uh, but if you're actually going for uh, the, because there are not plenty of risks in this case. In the first case, there are not plenty of risks, right? Um, in the second case, the risks are high, right? So um, higher the risk, higher is the gain. So if you say the higher the, higher the risk, higher is the gain, uh, then certainly uh, this supply uh, isn't there. And if you actually manage to get the supplies, obviously you're gonna get share them off the market. And obviously you're going to actually get the higher number of the profits in this. Uh, and the highest number of the profit or the highest amount of profit is in the third case, right? Uh, because this is a, it's, it's a maximum, um, maximum risk of failure. And there's a potential that your um, uh, your business is or your business is going to actually uh, get a major hit, right? Uh, okay. After opportunity, uh, what we need to actually look at is let's actually cancel this. Innovativeness. Um, innovativeness is actually uh, uh, we have already discussed. Innovativeness is uh, a more of a differentiation uh, that uh, uh, you offer to your customers, right? Um, and innovativeness, this is uh, offering something new to the customers, whether it's a feature, it's your packaging, placing, uh, whatever it is. So you can, um, we've, we've, we already discussed this thing earlier. Right. Uh, then there is a resource leverage. Now, this is something new. Resource leverage is accomplishing more with lesser resources. That is the basic definition of it. So this is actually uh, doing the maximum amount of job, offering the maximum amount of the features or uh, uh, offering the maximum to your customers with a limited, amount, a limited amount of the resources. So that is what a resource leverage is. Right. Um, Stretching uh, uh, your resources, uh, intelligently use your resources uh, for maximum output. Uh, this is what uh, actually a resource leverage is. So you being a fresh startup, you wouldn't have that much amount of the money to spend uh, on, uh, on the resources. So you would have a limited num uh, amount of the resources. You have to actually spend your resources very intelligently, right? So uh, <clears throat> the... Sixth one is the customer intensity. Now, obviously, customer intensity is the amount of the customers that you will be getting, right? Uh, if you actually look at the definition before, uh, now this is exactly what the definition said: um, profitable customers, retaining and acquiring the profitable customers. So the number of the intensity of the customers can actually increase when you are having already existing customers and you're actually buying more customers, bringing more customers in, uh, towards your product, right? So that actually reflects the number of the customers recommended uh, to have the lower number of the customers initially uh, so that you don't get overwhelmed uh, with 
the amount of the production that you need to do a, a, a customer number of the customers increase all of a sudden you would not have uh, enough resources uh, either the human resources or might be a capital you can say or maybe financial resources which is the capital actually uh, or anything else which is which it also includes the raw material as well uh, and if you get too many orders or too many customers all of a sudden you uh, might uh, uh, you would you would have to in fact um, get uh, more resources somehow or the other and you you might not actually get the resources uh, in time so that is the reason why it is recommended to have the low number of the customers and start with the gradual pace and then increase the customer base gradually right um, then <clears throat> The uh, fourth point, obviously, we have discussed is that overwhelming problem with the increasing number of the customer intensity, right? Um, then this last point, which is actually is this the last dimension of the entrepreneurial marketing, which is actually value creation. A value creation we discuss is plenty of a value creation is marketing makes principles, differentiation, innovation, right? So you can create the value through even the price. Uh, we can actually is we uh, uh, we can seven P's that we had actually discussed uh, for the value creation. So um, augmented, uh, prog uh, augmentation of the product, uh, the quality of the product, which is actually the physical product itself. So there are plenty of ways we can actually create the value creation. And this value creation is actually going to bring uh, the positioning in the minds of the customers. Now, entrepreneurial marketing uh, also involves, now these, things uh, which are we discussing over here are not actually one of the seven dimensions of uh, of entrepreneurial marketing so uh, these are uh, over and above uh, the entrepreneurial marketing and has been actually discussed plenty of times in uh, entrepreneurial literature uh, and especially the marketing literature, entrepreneurial marketing literature. Uh, so this is basically the role of networking. Uh, this networking is basically going and developing a network with the people uh, with the industry uh, with the, uh, even with your competitors right uh, even with your collaborators uh, your suppliers right uh, your customers so this is a whole new thing that which, which is which is actually current. now what is the importance of this networking and communication networking and communication is at, at your stage, at the very beginning, is actually one of the very basic sources through which you can actually get the primary data, uh, right? Uh, from that feedback and from that data, you can actually know what is actually going on in your environment. And once you actually evaluate your environment, that environment can actually tell you that what is actually demanded in the market and what actually you should uh, be putting up uh, uh, in the market right uh, so um, initially uh, networking and communication uh, the primary marketing strategies for you uh, personal marketing is one of the very primary strategy for you now word of mouth is basically uh, plays a very important role uh, in marketing your product um, for example, and the word of mouth, the example of the word of mouth is that if somebody somebody has actually bought your product and they have actually talked about your product with someone else uh, and they actually talk about your product with someone else. So it's actually the word of mouth which is actually spreading about your product, right? Or the service or about your company, right? So if, if your brand is, uh, the word of mouth is spreading about your brand, that's a positive thing, right? So you should be happy about it. Uh, and uh, if if that word of mouth reaches your uh, uh, ears that uh, uh, this brand is really very good, now you should be happy about it. This means that people are really talking about your brand or your product, right? Okay, <clears throat> this is one of the uh, 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 pictures which actually summarizes everything about, right? And that one proactiveness in personal networking, personal communication personal observation, specifically observation, right? Um, you must be very proactive in this. Once you are proactive in this, these are the things which can actually give you uh, the feedback, uh, right? Uh, this can actually give you the feedback, this section. Now, once you have got the feedback, you know exactly what to differentiate or what to innovate. And you can also see that where the opportunities are, right? 
right okay and with respect to the innovativeness you can actually fill the gap you can actually fill the gap of the, that particular opportunity and create a certain value for your customers right once you have actually created a value uh, and <clears throat> for your customers you can actually increase the customer intensity right you can actually create uh, increase the customer intensity as far as the risk propensity and the resource leverage is concerned they are always there throughout the framework you must keep on uh, 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 mitigating the research, uh, 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 risks and also le leveraging the resources throughout the process of entrepreneurial marketing right and this word of mouth plays a very important role although it does not actually tell you the opportunity what the opportunity is it does not actually tell you how to create the value it does not tell you how to you know uh, innovate but it yes this this personal networking and personal communication personal observation not exactly the observation but first two uh, the networking and the communication they play a very important role in increasing the customer intensity well um I hope this whole process is clear to you uh, and I hope uh, it will be <clears throat> well understood that what an entrepreneurial marketing is and how you are actually going to go ahead uh, for your uh, uh, marketing process. <clears throat> uh, this is basically the comp basic comparison of uh, the traditional marketing and the entrepreneurial marketing, which actually shows that uh, an essential um, a reactive stance with the respect to the external environment um, you know uh, firm attempts to influence the redefine the aspects of the external environment uh, and the basic comparison between uh, this uh, if you're going to see in these are that um, in the traditional marketing this is actually for the larger organizations whereas the entrepreneurial marketing over here is uh, basically for uh, you know uh, the individual um, or the smaller scale uh, marketing so um, the approaches are um, um, uh, the end result most probably are is actually going to be the same but uh, it's actually going to give a smaller scale perspective in the entrepreneurial marketing as compared to the traditional marketing right so um, I hope um, uh, this would be well understood that what an entrepreneurial marketing is and uh, if you have any questions, if you have any queries, uh, just um, text me uh, or you can comment under the video. Um, I'd be more than happy to help you. Um, otherwise, uh, Thursday, 10 o'clock, uh, we're going to have a live session. If you have any queries, just keep, keep them noted. Uh, we'll discuss it in that live session. All right. Uh, till next time, Allah Hafiz and bye-bye.